Really well. Thank you for spending this time with us. This is amazing to do this again. I know. I'm so excited. Um, uh, I think it's fantastic that we're reconnecting for another another beautiful uh, nature-inspired show. <laughs> yes, yes. Tell us about your latest body of work, Tracy. I'm, I'm enthralled to hear about it. It's only been, well, I can't believe it's been 12 months since we last spoke. You've been I know, isn't that time, yeah, time flies so fast. Um, so my latest body of work is called Birdsong um, and it's inspired by actually birds and their song. So um, songbirds, believe it or not, it's pretty sad. Are, yeah, basically birds are losing their song. Um, so there's the Regent Honey Eater. Um, with um, encroachment of their um, habitat. So basically, uh, like humans, how we pass on and teach the young, this is what songbirds do. And their parents sing the songs to the baby, to their babies. And these um, these birds, that's how they learn, how to communicate and how to um, communicate with their, uh, um, to other birds of their species. So without that communication, um, the, it affects their reproduction. And so that, that's why that bird is actually endangered right now. Right. And there's a few other songbirds in that category. So when I first actually heard that, I was so shocked. I heard that um, listening to you know ABC radio, mm -hmm. and uh, then I just wanted to do some research, and that inspired the whole exhibition bird song. Beautiful. And how long did it take you to put this one together, Tracy? Um, so it's another year of work. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also it's it's like years of collecting uh, materials. Yes. Um, yeah, so some, some of the materials I've had in the studio and they've just been sitting, waiting for the right sort of moment to, to shine. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so that actually happened uh, when, when I walk through, I'll show you which materials that actually happened with. But they're always happy kind of, moments you know where that inspiration and that concept all comes together yes i mm. love the piece behind you it is just divine yes. I thought I could start with this piece yes please do i i can <laughs> see your hair in this it just the <laughs> way the waves mimic your beautiful curl it's stunning tell us about it <laughs> so this piece is um sea spirit and of course it's inspired by, you know, the importance of natural habitats for birds. So it's made of kelp and the kelp has the beautiful waves of the sea. And I've created it in a beautiful kind of form where you see the ripples of the sea skirting into like one beautiful cascading shape. And I put touches of the darker um, kelp in amongst the, the natural uh, bony um, coloured wow. kelp. And are they all, is the kelp all collected uh, locally from you or is it something that you need to source from yeah. us? Or... Um, it's all, oh, sorry. Yeah, it's all sourced um, far north, um, northern far northern New South Wales. And of course, it's just a seasonal thing. So we need lots of big storms um, to find, to actually get them washed up on the beach and then, uh, and then kind of woven into shapes and then sun dried and then hand stitched all the way. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Love the shadows as well. 
the variation in color is amazing from those really darks to the like the bleached white you know which reminds me mm. of the bleached coral amazing and it's all found in the same area yeah i, I love how nature gives you those beautiful magical um, tones it gives the piece a lot of uh, texture and um, you know and really creates the story of the piece for me yeah yeah it's absolutely beautiful and, and what about the shape how is the shape indicative to the story is that does that come into mind when you're composing your artworks yeah to be honest um i felt with this piece um the more length it, it was given uh the more chance it had to kind of create that kind of magical wave effect yeah so i basically just kept adding and adding and adding to I got to a point where I thought, hmm, I'm happy with that. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Has it found a new home yet? No, but I'm not interested on this piece. I bet. I actually made a few works out of kelp. And yep. um, I've made some that have been woven onto wire and this fibre cascading off them. And they, some of those have actually found a home which is gorgeous yeah beautiful what's next uh, so you know how i am about fiber yes yes i understand <laughs> yeah with beautiful peacock oh so wow I've sourced, I've sourced some end, end of the line fiber you know yeah. i love doing materials and then I've charred um, bamboo, and then hands. Oh, and then the fibres being wound on each piece of bamboo. Wow! So you get these beautiful um, the markings of the fibre and uh, the beautiful texture and tone. Uh, and then it's all been hand sewn and creates this beautiful kind of scaling effect and this beautiful kind of undulating shape yeah yeah she feels very i don't know to me she's a girl she feels very peaceful she's calm yeah yeah, yeah. I agree. she does have a feminine quality about her and she really loves to let her hair down <laughs> she does yes <laughs> yes and so the peacock are they peacock feathers that have been twined into fiber strands is it is that how it works no, she got the name Peacock because she is all the tones of a peacock. Oh, so it's not, yes. Okay, I get it. Yes. Yeah. So it's repurposed, recycled fibre that looks, it's actually quite like feathers. Yes. Yes, yeah. I see. So it's Beautiful. really feathery. Yeah, yeah. They almost look like porcupine twills, you know, those long. Yes. Yeah, so I have made works with this bamboo to make it look like porcupine quills. Yeah. But this one I've dressed, she's been dressed up for um, to take flight. She <laughs> oh, she's beautiful. Yeah, she's I love her. What's next? This wow. One, yeah, it's very uh, intense, this piece. Yes. Uh, it actually just fit on the wall. It's like yeah. floor to ceiling. Yes. Um, and it's it's charred willow. Yes. And I've actually done the reverse. So normally I char the tips, but this time we've charred the actual body of the willow stick and then left the tips. So it, it created this amazing contrast in pattern and shape. Yeah. Um, and this one's actually Blackbird. Blackbird. Because I feel yeah. like, I don't know, this one maybe, it might be more masculine and he just wants to take off and take flight. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, and he's just watching over everything he flies over. Yes, yeah. Um, I love it, like the all-seeing eye, almost like that big round eye, and yes, actually, very much. Very much. Um, 
much like the eye of a bird as well. Yeah, look at that. It's it's very powerful. Do you ever take commissions, Tracy? Like I know some artists that we speak to say, no, I never do commissions because I just want to create for me. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want to be dictated to by, you know, other people's expectations. It puts too much pressure. How, do you ever take commissions or is it all sort of through your annual exhibitions? Um, I, I do take some commission work, but um, I do tend to uh, prefer that works are purchased from each show because yeah. I feel like you're capturing that energy in that moment, you know, that, that uh, it goes into creating a piece. Yeah. Um, but I do take on commissions, but um, uh, sometimes it might even be a work that I have uh, from a previous like show way back or something that could also work for a space. Yeah, um, yeah it really depends. Um, it, it, once I see the space and get a feel of the space, if I'm actually feeling that connection, I, uh, I'll take on the commission. Yeah, perfect. It has to feel right, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I can get, I totally get it. Well, that one's beautiful. But, uh, I actually work um, with uh, some uh, New Age Lithuanian artists. Yeah. And sometimes you get selected, like, out of a group of artists to submit a proposal then when you, once it goes through selection, your piece can be chosen and then I work with them and we transfer it into um, metal, which they actually made a kind of a metal version of this um, in the AMP building, in the Angel Place. Yes, yes. I think last time we spoke we showed big images of that, yeah? Oh, true. Yeah, up on the yeah, wall. Yeah, if people are watching, head back to Tracy's last uh, live um, that we did and we actually showed images of that. That was amazing. Yeah. We've actually, um, there is a woven work that is about to um, be installed and I've, worked, I've collaborated with UAP again and it's going to Brookfield Place in Wynyard and it's my biggest public commission yet. Which is really exciting. It must be huge. Yeah, it's about seven meters long, seven meters by mm, three or four meters high. So it's really exciting. Incredible. When's that due to be installed? Uh, October. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. You must have a good team behind you helping you. Oh. It's me and Mama D. <laughs> really? <laughs> because, um, uh, you know, you become so possessive of your making. Yes. And, like, we can work on these sorts of things together. Yes. But, like, some of these other um, works, like the, the Kelp works, um, and some of the other, I'll, I'll show you as we walk around. It's just whatever I'm uh, feeling and, the, you know, the, the whole repurposing materials. Yeah. So I tend to just dive into that, deep dive into that myself. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. But I'm a deep and I work on all these beautiful woven pieces together because that's, a lot of work. <laughs> I bet. I and it's bet. quite beautiful that you're creating that with uh, someone so close to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah it's very special. Mm. What have you got next? Uh, so we have here, we have Bush Song. Um, and Bush Song is again, I love repurposing material. And then I've, I've cut up some beautiful old, um, you know, netting that's actually illegal now, which is good. It's illegal fishing 
netting because that was just capturing everything possible from the sea. Yes. So I rescued that and cut it all up and knotted it. And then I've repurposed some mesh as well. So I just love the contrast of the two. Yeah, I just feel like this piece is singing its song in the bush. It's actually um, quite sad, isn't it? The, actually, the more you look for things on the beach, the more debris you find. Well, see, I, I, that's, it's really sad actually, you're right, because um, like a lot of birds are getting caught up in that and swallowing things and it's affecting, um, it, it affects their whole uh, breathing and everything. And of course, sea creatures, it's, yeah. it's really sad, actually. I've seen a lot of footage of that where they open them up and they find, oh, you yeah. know. Right. Yeah. The, the fact that people use the sea as a dumping ground is really sad. And plus they, it makes its way to the sea, doesn't it, from, from cities. Yeah. But these pieces are, are really beautiful. Well, see, I think uh, that's why I try and highlight things in my shows to um, make people aware. Because a lot of people didn't realise that birds were losing their song. Yeah. So it was so good for people to actually uh, read up on that and study about that and, uh, you know, make them kind of aware and want to do something about that. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, education is so important, isn't it? Oh, sure. And it's so important to just keep educating yourself on what issues are around you. Yeah. And then your response to that is so po in such a positive way. Like, I mean, we, it's easy to get caught up in that negativity, isn't it, and feel overwhelmed by the state of the earth and the state of affairs. Mm -hmm. But then to create something beautiful out that, that out of that, which also educates, is very special. So thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. That's a pleasure. Well, I yeah. think also as an artist, it's like your coping mechanism. Yes. Like, happening around you so I put all that energy and all that feeling and emotion into into creating the work and then hopefully the work kind of speaks to people yeah being quite powerful for this exhibition um, yeah people have actually said it's brought them to tears which is quite beautiful it's actually it did bring me to tears as well <laughs> happy yeah. tears yeah, I bet. And how beautiful that this year people can come into the gallery and experience it for themselves oh. and actually feel that energy from the work. You know, there's oh. one thing to see it through a screen, but to to see it and be with it in the same room is, is one thing, isn't it? Is oh, another. It's the biggest joy for me because there's nothing more, um, you know, more heartwarming than seeing an instant response from people when they come in. Yes, yeah, so that that's really truly that's what we make art for because it's it's you want to see how it's speaking to people and um, that reaction yeah always warms my heart. Yes. And now we've got bush tape. Gorgeous. So again, I've used this beautiful netting. I mean, I can call it beautiful because I changed exactly what it was originally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then I repurpose this mesh into this beautiful sculptural sort of form. Um yeah, and it just got the title Bush Tales. I don't know why, but I feel like it has a story to tell. That connection to uh bush. And birds taking flight, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. It's stunning. I, I love, it actually does look a bit like the lace work in this mesh. It really does look like the beautiful patterns you see on birds on their, um, on their actual um, feathers. Yeah. Like lacy patterning. Of course, yeah. Um, 
I'd love to look at a feather under a microscope, actually, and just see how they, um, I don't know if you did the same thing as a child, but you'd sort of pull the feathers apart and they almost like zip locked back together again, you know, and then you'd. Yes, they do. I did that with this show. Yes. Yeah, I just, I loved doing that as a kid and you'd pull them apart and try and make them back to perfect again. And they, sometimes they would. Yeah, it's amazing something so delicate and fragile how we actually um, can withstand that sort of thing. Yeah. And pulling at it. <laughs> well, that's beautiful. Okay. And so they do they come as a pair or they're separate individual? No, people? they're both separate works. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, just, they're great. They're floating in the window and it's um, quite beautiful as the light changes. Yeah. Um, you know, you see sometimes they become like almost transparent. Yeah. So, yeah, it's quite beautiful to see. And then you see more intensity of colour at different times of the day and night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, they're gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> and then we've got a seabird. Oh, so that's, awesome. that's actually the kelp again. Yeah. Um, but I've actually made a, a wire um, base that I've, I've repurposed and found, you know, I'm always rescuing materials. And I made this beautiful kind of shape and then I um, wove the kelp through it. And then I attached the fibre, all like hemp and recycled fibre. Mm. And this one's doing its dance on a plinth. But it's actually, it's found a home and it's going to actually be suspended um, in someone's hallway. We're going to float it above um, the window so you'll see it from lots of beautiful angles. Yeah, it deserves, it deserves to be viewed from all angles, doesn't it? Yeah, it'll be beautifully celebrated in that yeah, way. That's a gorgeous way to describe it. Yes, yeah. I love the colour variation in the fibres at the bottom as well. That's gorgeous. Mm. Yeah, I, I was attracted to tones that I saw in the kelp. Mm. So they kind of they're a play on bouncing off the colours off each other. I mean, to be honest, I love a lot of these piece, pieces. Anyway, it's tree moss. Yes. Tree moss. Um, and I... I've repurposed that fibre again and I've used some found um, fibre rings and I love that they're a bit quirky, they're not like a perfect shape. And I've just cut the fibre up and knotted them along the top and then they just cascade and do this beautiful, and to me it's, it is like tree moss. And I'm just picturing, you know how birds fly through the trees and land on a mossy branch or, or when they're, um, uh, you know, looking for their food. I just feel like it's so much like a bird's like little haven. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's so delicate and beautiful. Delicate. And it reminds me also of like ancient forests. Yeah. You know how yeah. you've seen ancient forests where they're out there, they naturally have the um, the beautiful um, uh, like liana vines and they're covered in the green moss and they're all just cascading everywhere. Yes, I do. Yeah, and it, like the, the, you know, like the, I think I'm not sure if they're succulents, but they don't like the air rooting plants. Like they don't actually need to have their roots in the soil. They actually just feed off the air. Yes, exactly. They're like tree roots and air roots and air plants. Air plants, yes. Yeah, which, yeah, I can see that. I can feel that for sure. Yeah. How do you, like, how does the gallery cope? Like, I know that you are so tactile and, like, I would be the same as you. I would just be wanting to touch and feel. How does the gallery, how does the gallery control people from not touching your work? <laughs> well, it's actually interesting because a lot of people are very respectful. Yeah. And they, they actually 
would ask permission to touch something. Yes. Um, or, you know, they just get nice and close to it. Um, there's almost yeah. that, um, um, there's something about the power of restraint as well. Like if you really want to touch something and then you know you shouldn't or you can't, <laughs> there's, actually, there's a power in that, isn't there, that you're like, I know I can't touch it. It almost makes you want to touch it more. <laughs> True. So uh, there are some pieces that are fine, like, to be touching as I am. Yeah. But there's, like, the certain pieces like the kelp um, yeah. that I just kind of, you just have to be careful because they're, um, they're all beautifully woven and attached and you just don't want them touching that. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, these, these ones, what I love is the movement as well. So mm -hmm. in the day we have the doors open and then the breeze creates this beautiful motion. Yes. So they're quite, kind of, they're quite magical in it. They're very simple but very magical. Sometimes it's the simplest things that create that magic. Oh, always. You know and how so we try and complicate things in life? We do, always. <laughs> so I think nature teaches us, oh, it's not actually, it doesn't have to be that complicated. Yeah, keep it simple. You're mm -hmm. so right. But I think there's a sophistication about keeping it simple as well. Like your work is so mm. sophisticated. It's, you know, just, yeah, there is beauty mm. in the simplest of things, yeah. True. And then, you know, it's that thing of knowing when to stop. Mm. So, how, do you, how do you go with that? Do you just sort of, you just instinctively know now or...? Do you ever have to undo something and go, I've gone too far? I've gone too far, <laughs> Lucy. <laughs> um, actually, no, thankfully, it's it, the flow for this show has been really, really good. I, um, You know, you get to a point where you think, oh, I think this is done. Mm. And then actually it wasn't until we hung it in the, in the window that I totally uh, got to that point where Oh my God, they're even more beautiful than sometimes, you know, they just become even more beautiful than you imagined. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you uh, must I like those little surprises. Yeah, and you must get great satisfaction about hanging the work in its new home as well, like when you go to do it and install it. Um, mm. That must be amazing to sort of see it in a different, like in its home, in its place. Yes. It takes um, that's always a nice kind of surprise too when that happens. I bet. Uh, I always feel, because you know the show, we only have a day to hang two levels. Oh, no, sorry, two days to hang two levels. Yeah. And I think there's about 25 works, and they're all chart, like they're not just simple things that you place on a wall. <laughs> so like, when we actually put them into people's homes, we can spend more time with the installation. So I always feel like when they find their homes, they seem to um, shine. Uh, they're at their best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect, gorgeous. What are some of your other favourites? They must be all your favourites, but I know. Uh, I, I have too many. <laughs> it's like trying to choose between your children. That's impossible. It is impossible. <laughs> Tracy, do you have more pieces that you'd like uh, to show us? Sure, if you'd like. We've got some. So oh, these yeah. pieces, um, basically, I think I started on these for the show, for the, some of the first pieces I made, so which bird song. So we have songbird and bird song. Mm -hmm. and all the layers of feathers and textures um and i've made them as like beautiful sacred sort of offerings yeah it's almost like a homage to our beautiful birds and um yeah they're quite they're very overly textural which yeah. is 
what I wanted and um, and the tones and the patterns the really kind of pulled up my heartstrings. So. Yeah. They almost it's as though they want to take off. <laughs> yeah. And they come as a pair, don't they? Yeah, they're actually sold individually, but uh, they, they are cute together. Yeah, yeah. Do birds mate for life? Are there a lot of species of birds that mate for life? Well, it's interesting because that's the whole thing with bird song, you know, birds losing their song, and that's actually affecting their whole mating. Because yeah. they're singing the correct song, so it affects the whole reproduction of birds. Yeah. Yeah. Just so intense when you think about it. Yeah. Yeah. So that and knowledge was also being passed on. It'd be like, um, you know, as humans and how we pass on that knowledge to our children. So that knowledge is being lost with songbirds, which is pretty heartbreaking, personally, I think. Yeah, yeah, mm. that's true. That's true. Well, they're lovely. They're just lovely. Thank you. We have a few more downstairs if you'd like to see them. Oh, yes, please, if you wouldn't mind. <gasps> oh. So the light on this is really beautiful. So wattle bird. Yeah. Um, so I've made like a repurposed, I rescued the wire base. And then wove uh, some found fibre as well, uh, which I pulled apart all this rope to create these beautiful, um, they created this beautiful squiggly sort of pattern. Um, and then plaited hemp. And then I frayed the tips because I just love, I think it's very bird-like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's yeah, and again, the beautiful shadows. And I just love the, the lightness of, the, of these pits. Yes. Yeah. Were you ever tempted during the exploration of this theme to actually physically make nests? Well, interesting you say that because I think the shapes are kind of all nest-like. Mm. But I've turned this one completely upside down. Yeah. Yeah. So look at the shape here. So um, it's probably my contemporary twist on a nest. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, sometimes the most obvious thing to do is not not the right thing, is it? Yeah. I like the mystery. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, and I love the thing about birds and how they, they collect those little frayed bits of fibres and they build their nests out of it. So Yes, true. Like this, this is almost like an offering to them, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, yeah, all the different kind of textures and the patterns just cascading in this piece like, just really gives me some uh, a, a lot of joy. <laughs> yeah, I bet. It's gorgeous. And then we have mother bird. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there's one. always a mother. I think there's always, there is always a mother, isn't there? And there's a wise one and they all have their yes. personalities. Yeah. yeah. This one definitely is mother bird because mum and I wove this. It's the last piece we wove for the show. Yeah. And it was a last, it was just a spontaneous play with these repurposed fibres. And I just got all this, I just got this energy and excitement. I said, Mum, I feel like we, we need one more work. <laughs> no, it was and, the last one. And that evolved out of the two of us, you know, sharing stories and um sharing memories and then I thought oh my god this has to be in honor of my beautiful mother mother bird and oh. uh, yeah so it's you know the similar to peacock but different because of the different tones and this one's got a lot of wisdom yeah I see that yeah <laughs> I see that as well 
Yeah, she flies and she's a little older, isn't she? Yeah, older and wiser. Yeah. And, you know, in the bird kingdom, I'm sure those mother birds are looking after their baby birds. Yeah. It's all about, um, you know, that nurturing. Yes, yeah. The more, and how- we nurture, the more we nurture each other. I mean, nature teaches you a lot, doesn't it, really? About the yeah. art of living and nurturing and um, spending that time with your young ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If someone fell in love with that straight away, they have to have I bet. Has that yeah. like come home? They yeah, it's going to a private home. Actually, it's a beautiful story that the parents are um, giving it to their daughter. Oh. Isn't that divine? Yeah. And this lovely couple, they're actually they've been collecting my work for a long time. Mm-hmm. And now they're passing that collection on to their children. Oh. They're starting to collect for their children. It's very gorgeous. And I yeah. couldn't choose between this and this. If we get time, I can show you for some wire works upstairs and they chose one of those as well. Oh, how gorgeous. How special. That's really cool. Yeah. Such a beautiful family. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you for sharing that one. That that gave me goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, you know, I, I'm so lucky that I tend to have a beautiful connection to people that seem to connect to my work. Yeah. It's just, I suppose it's like when someone connects to your one of your babies, <laughs> there's an instant connection there. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I can understand that. So we've got um, bird spirit. So this is kelp again, but I've dried them in a coily sort of shape. I've made like a, a, a metal sort of structure with, you know, found wire again. And then this piece really pulls at your heartstrings because the shadows are just so intense. Yeah. I love all the squiggly. It's like a, it's almost like a storytelling of bird life or something. Yeah. And then we've got all the beautiful fibre. You know how crazy I am about (laughs) fibre. You are. So different types of hemp fibre. Uh, and I love I love the scribbly fibre with the scribbly mm. uh, uh, kelp. Yeah, that's beautiful. Mm. I love that. I love the shadows of that. That is amazing. Mm. Yeah, it almost looks like a signature, like just from where I'm seeing the shadows just underneath the actual piece where the fibres hang down. It looks like somebody's signature underneath it. It's, it's gorgeous. Mm. Yeah. My signature's a bit like that. It looks like a scribble. Yeah. 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 Like a, it's, it's its own signature. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. And then, oh, actually, we've got one more work down here. Yeah. Uh, so this one's Shadow Song. You can see it's singing a song of of all the beautiful, you know, the wing, the wingspans of a bird, how they cast those beautiful shadows, all the shadows when you're under nature. It's like a yeah. celebration of all the things I love. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I've charred the bamboo, and this time I've charred it in reverse, so you get the, the natural tips, but the body of the bamboo is charred black. Yeah. And then it's all been hand sewn. And then I've made a, a double circle. So there's one circle and then there's a whole other circle around it. Yeah. There's a lot of energy in this piece, isn't there? It is. It is. It's actually interesting you say that because I feel like there's a lot of 
it seems to vibrate or something. Yeah. The vibration is in is very intense. But it's extraordinary. This work actually is going to Melbourne. Oh, lovely. That person actually felt the vibration through looking at the photo. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Oh, I think I, I think it's interesting, absolutely. And but I can feel it through the screen, which I find even more, <laughs> you know, because it does feel like a barrier. But as soon as I saw that, I was like, this is, it does feel like energy. And I don't know whether it's the composition or the light or the tone, or it feels like, even looks like sound waves or something coming out of it. But there is an energy to it. Yeah, like a soundscape. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Actually, beautiful observation as well. Yeah. And of course, the intensity of the shadows. Yes. Um, and I love it. It does. It really dances on the wall, doesn't it? Yeah, that's great. I can I can see that in someone's amazing apartment or house. Yeah. Mm. And actually, this really surprised me because I, I I kind of played with it and saw the shape on the floor, mm. but um, seeing it on on that white wall, it seems to intensify the dark. Mm -hmm. And then you could just see the light tips and it just, that contrast really kind of, you know, got me all excited. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I bet. Because it, mm -hmm. so, it makes such a difference, doesn't it, what you're actually grounded on for sure. Like, and if you're yeah. working on flat, then if it goes up vertical, how does that change? And Yeah. Yeah, of course. Because, like, with these works, um, I, I lay them on the floor. I create the double circle on the floor and my floor in my walkway of my studio, it's actually like a distressed old like concrete floor, yes. which is beautiful, but you just don't see the magic when it's on the neutral. Yeah, back. I bet. You'd get just such a surprise when you put it up. You'd be like, yeah. Oh, yeah. A surprise. Okay. <laughs> That's fantastic. I love happy surprises. <laughs> Yeah, thankfully it happens a lot, especially when hanging this show. Lots yeah. of happy surprises. So here we have another woven work. And this one um, has like streaks of like beautiful cream and grey. And yeah. So it's definitely got the title of Magpie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they gorgeous, those magpies? Oh, I love them. You know, there's certain birds that people disregard and pick on, but I just think they're extraordinary birds. Mm. Um, yeah. And yeah, so beautiful fibre and, you know, the woven stitched. Yeah. yeah. And where, magpies are so like they're so shiny, and you know there is a real contrast to them as well, isn't there? On the like the tips of their <clears throat> white down to black, and I can, yeah, this is amazing. Yeah. True, and it's actually interesting you say that because to me the black is it is a, like a this shiny black, but a luster. Like, it's like a blue black. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I love that it. it's got the touch of the cream in there. Yeah. And what a distinctive song the magpie has as well. I, I, yeah. I won't I won't attempt to, to make that sound, but <laughs> it, they really do have that. You just know that it's a Maggie. Yeah. That's right. And it's beautiful how different birds connect you to different um, feelings and emotions. Like I love when we go down the south coast and you hear like the coastal birds and you're like, <gasps> Oh, I'm in the bush. I can yeah. relax. I'm in a beautiful, you know, natural environment. I can just let go and feel free. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. My favorite bird is the kookaburra. And oh, hello. the king of the bush. And I always feel like when we moved into our house and I was unpacking boxes, there was there was a couple of them sitting in a tree and they were just laughing and I knew that they were laughing at me. <laughs> So I, I think they're, they make me laugh and they, yeah. you know, it's actually quite joyous 
when you hear a book about, it actually makes you stop and think, why are we being so serious? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, we should all be able to laugh at ourselves. Yeah, exactly. And they laugh with each other. And that's what makes it their sound even more beautiful is because they yeah. play off each other. They laugh together. True. One starts and then another one starts and they all, it's like a chorus of kookaburras. Yeah, that's right. There's always two laughing. <laughs> oh, we've actually got honeybirds. Yes. It's, yeah. like a pot, it's like a pot of honey. <laughs> I see it. Yes. Yes. And, you know, speaking of nests, this is very nest-like. Yep. And I love how I've actually left, it looks like twins. Mm. And then we've got um, some cascading fibre. I love that, that though, it almost, it, it's inviting, but it's also, there's a warning, like, don't come too close. You know? <laughs> like something and precious is inside, yeah. That's so cute. And then underneath, there's actually a, a woven um, wire shape. Yeah. And then we've got all this beautiful kind of knotted fibre. Yeah. So there's lots of kind of, there's a lot going on in this piece. Yes. Yeah. You're having a, a bad hair day. <laughs> <Yeah>. Well. <laughs> no, it's all, you know, again, it's all beautiful fibres. Yeah. Is like repurposed these fibers here are like a repurposed um twine and there's lots of delicate lines in there and they've got the tones of the uh, of the honey mm. that is beautiful yeah. she's kind of almost like demanding to to have attention yes that's a great way to describe it. Yeah. And then we've got another kelp work. Um, it's a seabird. And I actually love, I love it on the wall. Yeah. And then it's got all this beautiful work in there. Wow. Yeah. And um, I really love, it's almost like a, a beautiful kind of, offering of seabirds and their flight and their you can just see how they soar over the um their natural habitat yeah yeah absolutely beautiful escape and you've got the sea i love the movement in that too yeah mm. that's why I love it. it just has extraordinary movement Mm. And then the fibre gives it that extra bit of cascading beauty and all that beautiful wavy kind of pattern and it's like it's the scribble of nature. <laughs> That's a great way to describe it. Yeah, the scribble of nature, nature's signature. <laughs> so and I, I love doing this. I just like making it more and more scribbly. Mm. <laughs> That's great. Um, and then maybe the final one for downstairs is this beautiful piece. Wow. This is different, yeah. Yeah. What are those fluffy bits? So this work is called Bottle Brush. Bottle Brush, beautiful. And it's actually repurposed, like I rescued these actual bottle brushes. So you know that cleaning. One, they're you know clean. The, the old school bottle brushes that they used to clean like um Yeah. In in science labs. Yeah, yeah. So I rescued those. They were actually sitting in my studio for a few years, yeah. just hanging off a piece of wire, just one piece of wire. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't till 
this beautiful bird song concept that came to that flew into my heart that I actually um, the work came together. So then I started adding the fiber to the bottle brush. Yes. And then I started creating this work with wire just because I felt like we needed to do something to create um, that um, balance, but not balanced. If you know that perfect, but imperfect. <laughs> yes, perfectly imperfect. Yep. Yeah. So it was like I just wanted to scribble and draw with wire. And then I just love the knotting and the shadows. Yeah. And so it's a bottle brush because it looks exactly like a bottle brush. Of course it does. <laughs> and actually it's funny, just before we did this video call, this lovely couple, they were querying three words. They couldn't choose between three. And they finally decided on this one. Oh, good on them. Mm. It's yeah. actually... They're so sweet. They showed me a photo. They want it. It'll sit in their window, and as soon as you're walking into the house, it's the first thing you see. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, perfect. Isn't perfect. that? Sweet? Yeah. Because they drove from, I think, down south, and their son has been telling them, "You've got to go see this show." And um, he's, he's familiar with my work because of the um, Angel Place A&P building. Yeah. He actually works in that building. Right, yeah. They kind of, they discovered my work over the last few years and then once they saw this, they kind of fell in love with it. Yeah. Oh, well, congratulations to them. I think that's amazing. That's beautiful. And to you too, Tracy. It looks like such another amazing, um, successfully beautiful exhibition. Um, your partnership with St. Cloche, it must be really special for them and for you to be able to have that, you know. Is it a yearly exhibition that you do with them? Yeah, every year. Um, yeah. I worked out that I've been showing for 18 years now, but eight years here. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. That's incredible. And and to your mum as well, like, good on her. She says to me, Blaze, you know your studio is my happy place. Oh, of course it is. It's so yeah. cute. So, you know, what can you do? We've got to weave and just share stories and it's our happy place. Yeah. Well, I think you've made lots of people happy today. By being by sharing your generously sharing your time with us to be able to take us on a tour of this exhibition again, and I've loved it. I could just sit and float away with you all night. It's just been beautiful. <laughs> oh, no, thank you so much, and it's so nice to have that catch up again. Uh, I'm sorry we didn't get upstairs, but maybe you can have a look online. It's quite different to down here. There's a lot of beautiful kind of wire works. Yes, and. Um, there's a lot of shadow play and drawing with wire. Great. Mm. What we'll do, Tracy, is we'll get some images and we'll overlay them and we'll pop them at the end of this video so people can see them and enjoy them as well. Oh, gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Is that um, very different to down here, but they still, they're kind of still speaking to each other. We've got a show in Melbourne. Oh, good. Yeah. In November. Yeah, where about? Yeah, it's um, it's at the James Macon Gallery. Yeah, and yeah, it's there. We're we're having that show in November, and it's it's inspired by um, nature again, of course. Um, more about the land. Well, I will certainly go to that. I promise. <laughs> I'll be putting it down and the James Macon Centre. Yeah. Yeah there in November but will will you pop that on your Instagram and let us know about that yeah yeah absolutely oh because you're based in Melbourne yeah yeah oh, I'm in Melbourne goodness. oh I didn't even think about that 
Yeah. And our gorgeous Tara Axford, who works with us, is based in Sydney. And she just happened to visit your exhibition uh, yesterday when she was dropping something off to St. Cloche. So, um, yeah, we've even got uh, Tara there if you ever needed anyone to sort of meet in person. So maybe next time we do this, we get Tara down and she can walk with you. Oh, fantastic. And we, um, uh, yeah, well, that's exciting. I'll make sure you come to the opening. Oh, thanks. I'd love to. Thanks, Tracy. Thank you, sweetheart. I'm so glad we could do this. Bye. See you next time.